Asad Ali and Mayur asked me to make a video about highway boards and yes, they can be extremely confusing. That's why we will dedicate the topic of this video to highway signs. Let's go! We are driving in our exam in direction of Munich on highway and according to the board we have four lanes. One, two, three and four. That's quite good, everything fine. We have right now analyzed already the sign, but when I'm driving by my own I focus on something different. I just need the highway board and I don't have to focus on any information because the size of the board actually covers all lanes. So I know all lanes are going into the same direction and everything is fine actually because if it would be otherwise we would have different signs on top of you. Right now we have two directional boards and from their size and their position we know that lane 1 and lane 2 are going straight ahead while lane 3 and 4 actually are heating out. That is shown on our navigation system as well. But it can be different as well. Now we have three directional boards. We know from the size and position that lane 1 and 2 is going straight ahead while lane 3 is going to another direction and lane 4 is even heating out earlier to a totally different one. So we have to expect that right now, positioned in lane 4, we will heat out the first one, while in lane 3 you're heating out as well and just lane 1 and 2 is going straight. And this is possible to see just by looking at the size and position of the directional boards. You got the concept right now. So in that case we know that lane 1, 2 and 3 are going straight ahead while we're on lane 4 are probably heating out into a totally different direction. And yes, the navigation system is showing exactly that case. But it's not only about the directional boards. Maybe you have seen as well at the example that the lines on the floor have changed as well. We've got three different type of lines as well. A continuous one, long and small ones or narrow ones and short and thick lines. What's the difference? You probably know it. The continuous line is not allowed to be crossed, while the long and thin one shows you that your lane is going straight ahead. In comparison to the thick lanes and short ones, you know that if you find these lanes on your left hand side, like here for example, that your lane is not going straight ahead anymore and that it might end or that you're leaving out. Alright, that's good to know, but why is this all necessary? Let's imagine you were driving the whole time in the fourth lane in direction of München and suddenly a new sign ahead of you appears that right now you're heading in direction of Frankfurt. It is quite easy if the examiner has told you that we should go out in direction of Frankfurt. But what does it mean if the examiner keeps quiet? In that case the examiner wants you to go straight ahead and because right now in lane number four you're heading out to Frankfurt it means that you have to change your lane into lane number three without that someone has told it. So be aware of the highway signs on top of you. That was indeed a special case. Quite more common is following situation. You have three lanes in that case, heating in direction of Munich, you are in the third lane and the examiner wants you to turn out the next exit. So if you go more ahead, 
you will see soon another board on the right hand side. But in this case there is no arrow. That means you still have a continuous line and if you probably remember you're not supposed to cross it. Check carefully on it. It is noted there will appear a lane but in 500 meters. So you have to go more ahead and you have seen it already. We have some small signs on the right hand side. The first one is the entry comes in 300 meters, in 200 meters and in 100 meters. You probably have heard it already in your classes that from 300 meters you should start to indicate. In 100 meters you should check your blind spot and then turn in. Important, maintain your speed until you entered into the exit lane that no one behind is supposed to break because of you. So please maintain speed, enter and then slow down. But do you have to really slow down? The indicator which responds to that question is this arrow. Check out the position of it. Right now the arrow points out straight. So in that case you're on an exit lane, but there is no curve right now, so you can go straight ahead. That means yes, to have to slow down a little bit, maybe from 100 to 80, but you don't have to slow down more because there won't be a curve. But in comparison to this sign we have seen before, that sign points out to the right. So if you see this sign on top of you, you know because of the arrow that your lane is heating out soon and you have to be careful because behind of that sign the curve is waiting for you. Let's have a look. Right now the arrow is pointing out to the right and we know looking into our navigation system that the curve is about to occur. In that case obviously you have to slow down. If you don't know that curve it is recommendable to slow down to 50 km per hour to be sure that you get the curve in the right manner. But the sign is telling you something more. It gives you even an idea what happens after the curve. Let's have a look. Focus if next to the arrow is a number. This sign you've seen before. But it can be as well like that. And now we have a 66 on the side. It doesn't have to be 66, it can be another number. But do you know what it means? It means that after the curve, you're not entering to Frankfurt, you're going to a highway in direction of Frankfurt. Meanwhile, with this sign, you know that you're heating out and after the curve you will enter the city of Frankfurt. So if you have this sign, you know that after the curve you probably have to stop. There might be a stop sign, a traffic light, a crossing, a roundabout, whatever. But because that there will be the city of Frankfurt, it is highly probably that you have to slow down. Meanwhile, if you have a number next to the arrow pointing out to your exit lane, like in this case, you know that after turning out, a highway is waiting for you. That means you will go into the curve and instead of slowing down, in your head you have to have all the steps prepared to enter a new highway again. And all this you can know in advance if you know how to read that signs. So to wrap up the topic of highway boards, check out the position of the highway boards on top of you. Be careful about the position of the arrows and watch out if next to the arrow is a highway number that you know what is awaiting you after the curve. So hopefully all these tips will help you to master your exam on highway but if you think of another difficult road situation, describe it in the comments and make it the topic of my next video. Thank you and goodbye.